by 1303. Moscow controlled land that encompassed the entire flow of the Moskva River. Its ambitions didn't end there. Moscow continued to expand its borders through its wealth rather than warfare. Its tactic was to buy land from bankrupt rulers, acquiring entire towns and villages in the process. As Moscow was still a vassal of the mighty Mongol Empire, it had to send envoys to pay them tribute. And Moscow's ever-expanding borders meant more and more revenue for the Mongols. But not everyone was content with the rise of Moscow. As Moscow grew in power and influence, its grand prince, Dmitry Ivanovich, reinforced its vulnerable defenses. Its wooden fortress, the Kremlin, was rebuilt. This time, in stone. But even stone walls didn't deter its enemies. By 1368, Lithuania saw rapidly expanding Moscow as a real threat. Joining forces with the Principality of Tver, they set out to challenge its dominance. They attacked Moscow. But the stone walls held, and the enemy retreated. Tension between the factions refused to die down. In 1370, Moscow marched on territories belonging to both Tver and Lithuania, igniting a full-blown war. Years of bloody conflict ensued, until Moscow's Grand Prince Dmitry Ivanovich finally defeated both enemies. Yet Moscow was still a vassal of the Mongol Empire, which still demanded tribute. Moscow must keep up the payments, or face retribution. Trade routes between loose settlements supported a vibrant economy, which in turn allowed Moscow to pay forward tribute to the Golden Horde. If Moscow was to avoid a Mongol attack, Dmitry would have to meet the Horde's tribute demands before the Khan's patience expired. Moscow's primary means of raising the taxes demanded by the Horde was through trade with nearby Rus towns. But Prince Dmitry would have to keep his traders safe from raids by opportunistic bandits that stalked the countryside. While Moscow's trade was strong, Dmitry could bolster his income if he could locate additional trade partners. Дело есть. Накази, Нови и Суть. Как они накази, Суть? 
Ладно, есть. Повинуюсь! Скачу, куда велено есть. Направляйся. Двигаюсь. Скачу. Уж уразумев. Trade routes brought wealth, but safe passage was not a given with bandits stalking the roads. Increasing Moscow's income required locating additional trade partners. To do so, the Muscovites needed to scout the land in search of new settlements. Хочу, куда велено есть. Каков Сагонин? Наказе суть. Приказывай. Слева. Разве честность? Как угодно. Фарев, двигаюсь. Хочу, куда велено есть. Направляюсь. Приготовляй, уразуме. А за следую наказом. Слушайте наказ, уразуме. А? Направляюсь. Я готов. Беда есть, ворог приедет. The deadline for payment of tribute approached. Dmitri had to quicken his efforts to collect the necessary taxes. Yes. 
With the Golden Horde paid, the Muscovites could concentrate on expanding their territory until the next payment was due. Лучник готов! Стрела на течеве есть! Приготовляй! Обрежь войне! Какие повинулись? Как они повинуются? Забить! Послушайте все! Назад будет! When Dmitri's men located Vladimir, they opened another revenue stream for the Grand Prince. But more traders on the road meant an increased threat of bandit raids. As Moscow grew in riches, the Khan continued to demand taxes. If Dmitri did not pay, he would face the swift vengeance of the Horde. As Prince Dmitri sought to increase Moscow's power, he turned from trading with his neighbors to purchasing their lands outright. If he owned the surrounding lands, Moscow would be the dominant center of whose power, and Dmitri would be secure as Grand Prince. The village of Kalin was ready to trade with Moscow. Moscow's power grew as it absorbed the lands around Kolunma. The town would now generate gold without the need for taxing traders. Before he could purchase the settlements, Dmitri needed to prove he could provide safe passage for the traders and their goods. Слушай, напряжь по скорому. 
Dmitry purchased the lands of Troitsky and extended Moscow's power. Bandits remained a threat on the roads, however. Слушайте, 
Слушайте. Идите в бой. Да. Аказиновий Суч. Аказиновий Суч. На пресс по скору. Готовы будете. Вот. Слушайте. Сбираю древеса. Работа ждет. Сие возможно есть. Буду требовать. Радость. Чего, чего делать надо было? The Khan once again demanded taxes from the growing Rus provinces. But this time, the price to keep the horde at bay was higher than ever before. Слушайте, воины. В ним грядите в путь. Лучший наказ, но... Напрежь по скору. The small settlement at Pereslav welcomed Muscovite scouts and the prospect of trade. The Rus of Kalin now recognize Dmitry as their grand prince. Лучший наказ, но... Я кого угодно есть. Люди, сделаем сейчас. Начну трудитесь. И схожу. Чего делать и надо мной? Иду уже. Радуйся. Люди ждут. Сбираю древес. Готово трудитесь и есть. Радуйся. Да? Брань будет. Брань замет. Готовы. Оказано ли суть? Готово трудитесь и есть. Слушайте все.
уже наказано. Слушайте! Молчите и слушай напрячь. Брань будет. Я кого угодно есть. Какови накази суть? Напр... Опасно есть! Направляюсь! Стреляю! Двигаюсь! Двига... Уразуме! Будем сражаться! Приближайтесь, обоизливи! With the gold he had raised, Dmitry purchased Paraslav outright. Moscow's power over the region was now secure. With the surrounding principalities under Dmitry's sway, Moscow was now the preeminent power among the Rus. The time was coming to throw off the Mongol yoke. 